In today's video, you are going to code an advanced reinforcement learning algorithm called NSTEP SARSA. You don't need any prior exposure to reinforcement learning, you just have to follow along. Let's get started. But first, if you're new to the channel, I am Dr. Phil Tabor. In 2012, I got my PhD in condensed matter physics and went to work for Intel Corporation as a back-end dry edge process engineer. I left there in 2015 to pursue my own ventures and have been doing machine learning and freelancing ever since. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification icon so you get notified when I release new reinforcement learning and deep learning videos. Before we get to the code, I have some announcements. So this particular video is motivated by my desire to add a new unit to my course, Deep Q Learning from Paper to Code, currently on sale at Udemy for $10.99. Hit the link in the description. Uh, and I'm going to add in not just a module on NSTEP Deep Q Learning, but as well as a module for the regular reinforcement learning portion of the course about uh, NSTEP temporal difference methods. So if you're new to reinforcement learning, then the basic idea is that it is similar to supervised learning, except that we replace the truth labels with rewards from an environment. That's kind of the gist of it, loosely speaking. You know, that's not very technical, but that's the basic concept. You have a couple different classes of algorithms. You have what are called Monte Carlo methods that tend to learn at the end of an episode based on the uh, states the agent encountered and the rewards it received during the course of that episode. So every episode, it gets a new set of state transitions, a new set of rewards, and totally forgets about anything that happened before it. You also have temporal difference methods, uh, which encompasses something like Q-learning, which you've probably heard of, whereas actor critic methods will fall into Monte Carlo methods, or sorry, policy gradient methods would fall under the category of Monte Carlo based learning. But Q-learning is a type of uh, temporal difference learning in which the agent learns at each time step based upon the transition, state transition due to the action it just took. SARSA is a similar algorithm to Q-learning, the difference between being that SARSA is what is called on policy, meaning you have one algorithm for deciding how to act and you use that algorithm to generate data to update the estimates of states and actions uh, generated by that policy. Q-learning is off policy, meaning you have one algorithm that tells you how to act and you use that to generate data to update the value of a separate policy. A policy is just an algorithm for deciding what to do in any given state of the environment. Okay, long-winded introduction out of the way. Let's go ahead and get to our coding. So our imports for this are going to be really light. Uh, we'll need Jim. And that is basically it for our imports. Very, very simple. We're just going to use NumPy for this and the OpenAI Jim. So we're going to be dealing with the cart pull environment, which if you're not familiar with it, is a cart that slides along a track left to right and has a pole uh, that bounces left to right. And if it falls over, the episode terminates and the agent loses. The agent's goal is to keep the pole upright for as long as possible. And it gets a reward of one for every step and a reward of zero for terminating the episode. So it tries to maximize the number of steps the pole stays vertical. Now, this is a continuous act uh, state space, meaning that the cart moves along a number line between plus and minus 2.4, uh, and the uh, theta velocity has some bounds as well as the cart velocity. Now, those are continuous numbers rather than being discrete states. Typically, you would use a deep neural network or something like that, uh, but we can actually do a little trick that preceded the uh, kind of explosion in popularity of deep neural networks, and that is called digitizing. So we can take a state space and divide it up into little discrete chunks and then define each uh, state by the chunk in which that observation falls. So what does that mean? So we have four different parameters for our observation, the angle of the pole, the pole velocity, the position of the cart, and the cart velocity. So what we're going to do is we're going to define several spaces, and that'll be a NumPy linear space. Let me make that a little bit larger for you guys. And that'll go from minus uh, 0 0.209 to positive 0 0.209 and 10 bins. So it'll create 10 buckets evenly spaced between plus and minus 0 0.209. So then we have a theta velocity space, a lin space, and in the cart pole environment, this can technically be plus and minus infinity, meaning the velocity of the pole, uh, the tip of the pole could be plus or minus infinity, but in reality, it never gets to that. Uh, if you play the game at ran uh, with a random agent a few times, you'll see that uh, plus or minus four encompasses most of the velocities. So we're not really losing anything. The car position can be from minus 2.4 to positive 2.4. And again, we want 10 buckets. 
and we have a cart velocity space as well and that's of course also bounded by plus and minus infinity but you know it doesn't get that large so we'll say something like minus four to positive four in ten buckets and so what have we done here we have taken uh, a four dimensional space you know the uh, cart position cart velocity pole angle and pole velocity uh, uh, with four dimensions and an infinite number of, you know, possible observations because they're continuous numbers and reduce it into something that has 10 to the four or 10,000 possible states because we have 10 by 10 by 10 by 10, 10 to the four, 10,000. So we have gone from something that is continuous into something that is discrete. Uh, but we need a function to do that transformation. And that takes an observation of the environment as input. Cart X, uh, good grief, the position, velocity, pole angle, and the pole velocity uh, gets unpacked from the observation. And then we say cart X equals int mp dot digitize. That's the inverse function of lin space. Cart X and cart position space. So we've turned a continuous number into an integer. Then we say cart x dot int mp digitize cart x dot cart velocity space cart uh, theta equals int mp digitize cart theta uh, cart theta space and cart theta dot uh, if you're not familiar with calculus, the dot just means a derivative with respect to time, so velocity. Int mp digitize cart theta dot and cart uh, theta velocity space. Got to keep my variable name straight. So that's our function to take an observation from the environment and turn it into a digitized observation. The next thing we need is a function to determine how to choose an action for our agent. Uh, so the agent will use something called epsilon greedy, action selection, meaning the agent has a hyperparameter of its model called epsilon that determines the fraction of the time that it takes random actions. And epsilon it starts out at one and goes down to zero, meaning the agent starts out taking totally random actions and then converges on taking what are called totally greedy actions. Greedy just means that it takes a look at the state it's in and says, okay, for this particular state, I think that one action has this value and the other action has another value. Let me take the action that I think has the greatest value. In other words, let me be greedy with respect to the value of the current state. And the reason we do that is because there is something called the explore exploit dilemma, which means the agent doesn't know if it's estimates for the values of given states or state and action pairs are accurate and so it has to spend some time exploring the environment at random to test its model to see if it is actually correct about what it thinks. So that takes uh, what is called a queue that is going to be our state action value function, uh, an observation, an epsilon, and a number of actions which I'm going to default to two for the cart pole environment and of course we need our colon uh, so we'll say state, he goes get state, obs. So this obs is the observation directly from the OpenAI gym. It's a four vector, a four tuple of, uh, you know, continuous numbers. We want to turn that into an actual digitized state. So if our random number is less than epsilon, then we want to take a random action. And that's just going to be uh, something where I can actually type a random choice of a list of, in this case, zero or one, because it can use zero to move left, I think, and one to move right. Otherwise, we want to say action values equals Q sub state A for A in range and actions. So we're going to have this quantity Q, and you'll see it in a moment, but Q is the estimate for the value of the state and action pair. And it's a, a real number, and it corresponds to the total reward the agent expects to receive given it some, it's in some state and takes that action. Uh, and then we say that the actual action equals np argmax over the 
action values. And regardless of how you select the action, you want to return it. Okay, so that is it for our helper functions. Although to be honest, after we code this up, there is significant room for improvement in my code because it, it is going to be quite ugly. Uh, and I'll leave that as a, an exercise to you, the viewer. Uh, I did this over the course of yesterday and today. It took me a couple few hours to get it totally debugged and played around with, with some hyperparameters. But I'm going to leave it. But I'm going to leave it kind of ugly. So we'll start with our name, uh, main loop. The first thing we want to do is make our environment cart bowl v0. Uh, since this is a learning problem, we do need a learning rate. And that is our parameter alpha. We'll give it a default value of 0 0.1. Uh, as we'll see from the textbook in a minute, uh, that is a there's a bit of a Pareto trade-off between the quantity n and the quantity alpha. So gamma is what is called the discount factor. This is just the quantity by which the agent discounts future rewards. And it does this because future rewards aren't certain. Uh, it's just like if I say, hey, I'll give you $1,000 now, or I'll give you $1,000 10 years in the future. Even disregarding inflation, you're going to want the $1,000 now because, well, you don't know what's going to happen in the intervening 10 years. You might get hit by a bus. Uh, you might surely have $1,000 now, right? And the agent is the same way. So our epsilon start value is 1.0. And so the next thing we have to do is uh, construct our list of states. And so what we'll do is create an empty list and then iterate over all the possible stuffs. I in range, uh, len, cart, position, space, plus one. J in range, len, cart, uh, vel space, plus one. Or IJ, K in range len cart data space plus one. And for L in range len cart theta bell space plus one. Uh, states dot append I J K L. So we're just going to append the I J K L tuple. So it's going to be zero 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 all the way up to nine 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 nine. And so then we have our states. Next we need our Q, and that's an empty dictionary. So we'll say for S in states, for A in range, env.action space dot n. You know what, we're just gonna call it two since I hardwired up there. Uh, Q, S, A equals zero dot zero. So this is the agent's estimate of the discounted future rewards given it's in some state S and take some action A. And that should be initialized arbitrarily, but the value for the terminal state is always zero. And so I just set everything to zero because, you know, just makes life easy. So then, well, this is an n-step temporal difference learning, n-step SARSA. So what does that mean? So as I said in the introduction, temporal difference methods take a look at the difference between the state transition from this state and the next state, and the reward it receives in that intervening time step. And that is a step of one, because you're only looking at this previous step, so you only take into account this, the reward you received on this time step. The n means how many steps back in time you want to look. So you could look back, you know, two steps, three steps, four steps, a hundred steps, and the limit that n becomes the length of the episode is where the uh, n-step temporal difference method converges on the Monte Carlo algorithm. Uh, and in the limit that n equals 1 is where it converges on the limit of regular temporal difference learning. Now, there may be a bug in here. Uh, I haven't gotten it quite to match up with SARSA for TDs, uh, for SARSA 0, so I may revisit this and update the GitHub later. Uh, but it does exhibit evidence of learning, so it is, we'll say, 95% correct. So the next thing we need to accommodate the fact that we have to keep track of n steps of, of states, actions, and rewards is create a sort of memory. And our observation vector has four elements, so it's n for n steps by four. And let's actually do this. We'll say n equals 16 is kind of what I settled on. Uh, there is a bit of a trade-off, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. Action memory, mp0s, n. Reward memory, mp0s, n. We also need an array to keep track of our scores over time. 
and the number of episodes we want to play. In this case, 50,000. So let's go ahead and play our games. Sorry, episodes. I'm already making typos. That's not good. Uh, so uh, the first thing we want to do is reset the environment. So we'll say done equals false, score equals zero, T for the time step within the episode equals zero, capital T uh, for the terminal step, infinity. And let's reset our environment. Get an action. Pass in Q, current observation, current value of epsilon, and say action memory T modulus N equals uh, action, not zero, sorry. So the reason you have to take the T modulus N is because the action memory is only N steps, whereas T is the number of steps within the episode. So you could be on step 20, but if you try to take step 20 of the action memory, uh, you're going to get an error because action memory only has 16 you know, 16 rows. So you have to take the T modulus N uh, to get the current step. So within the episode, uh, I'm gonna pause here and take a look at the actual algorithm from Sutton and Bardo. So let me switch over to that one second. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Sutton and Bardo, it is a textbook by Sutton and Bardo, two researchers in reinforcement learning. They're kind of the OGs of the field. They developed a huge amount of non-deep reinforcement learning material, and they've really literally written the book on the topic. This is a phenomenal resource. I've spoken about it before. If you're new to reinforcement learning, this is the place to start. Or, of course, you know, obviously you could use my other course through Manic Publications, uh, but this is free. You know, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, so definitely, definitely want to start here. Uh, but the main idea I want to drive home here is we have this plot and this is for a kind of toy environment, a random walk. Uh, so it's not accurate to what we're doing, but the general character and philosophy here holds true. So you have on the horizontal axis a learning rate alpha and the root mean square error, so lower is better on the vertical axis. And then you have a bunch of different curves corresponding to various ends for the end step SARSA algorithm. And so, uh, the basic idea is you get a minimum at different values of learning rate for different values of n. So it looks like there is a sweet spot trade-off between alpha of 0 0.4 and an n of 4. Uh, and then you get varying other, you know, uh, curves for different ends that have different minima that aren't quite as good corresponding to different values of alpha. So there is a huge landscape to go over here is the main idea. I've, I've just kind of picked some subset of it at random. And sort of, I picked a learning rate and played around with different values of n and said, okay, this looks good enough. If you want to play around with it and reproduce this plot, I would certainly encourage that to enhance your learning. But this is one thing to keep in mind that there's a trade-off between learning rate and n, and we have to find, you know, the front, the optimum of that Pareto given enough time. And the other thing to look at is uh, the text here. I'm not going to read it, uh, but this algorithm, let me zoom out a little bit. Can you still see it? There we go. So this is the whole algorithm we're going to be implementing. And uh, so we've already done this top line initializing Q arbitrarily. We've got our policy. We've got our parameters. And we've got this. Uh, we've initialized and st have I stored this state? I haven't stored the state yet. Uh, I need to do that. Uh, I didn't store the state, but I did store the action and select it and setting T to infinity. And so for each time step of the episode, what you want to do is uh, if it's less than the terminal step, you know, if the episode isn't over yet, you want to take the action, get the new reward, and store it in the uh, array. If the next state is terminal, set T, capital T, the terminal step to T plus 1. Otherwise, go ahead and select another action. Then you have this parameter called tau that you use to iterate over the memory to update the values for Q. So you set tau to T minus N plus 1. So uh, little t starts out as 0, and so tau starts out as 0 minus n plus 1. So if we have an n of 16, it starts out as 15, right? So 0, sorry, minus 15. Uh, so um, uh, t is 0 minus 15 plus, uh, sorry, minus 16 plus 1 is 15. 
And then the next condition is if tau is greater than zero. So tau starts out at minus 15 for our example. And so this code is not executed on the first iteration of the loop. It'll only be executed on the 15th iteration of the, the loop. In other words, the 15th step of the episode. So it accumulates 15, uh, 15 steps before it does its learning. It fills up the, those arrays and then says, okay, we're going to calculate G as the sum of the gammas to the I power times R sub I. So if you have, let's say four is an easier number to wrap our heads around. If you have four steps, it'll have gamma to the zero times R. It'll have gamma to the one times the next reward, gamma squared times the next reward, and then gamma cubed times the final reward. In this case, the rewards are all one, so you're just going to have gamma to the zero, gamma to the one, gamma squared, gamma cubed. And then if tau is less, if tau plus n is less than the terminal step, then you want to append or add this gamma to the n times q. Uh, q is, of course, the estimate for the state action value function, and so you want to multiply that by gamma and add it on to your g. This is the target. And then after doing that, you want to say, okay, let's update Q as its present value plus learning rate multiplied by that return G that you calculate here and here minus the value for the current tau step, not T, tau. And then don't worry about this. Uh, we automatically update pi because we're updating Q. And then the neat thing, and what kind of tripped me up, made me have to debug it for a little bit longer, is that you say until tau equals capital T minus one. Well, the way we have it structured, the loop will terminate as soon as you hit done. And so you still have several steps left to iterate. And we'll see that in a minute. And that is really where you can really improve upon my solution. Or maybe I'll do it at the end uh, if I'm feeling a little bit saucy and do it in real time for you guys. But this is the algorithm we want to implement. This is n-step Sarsa. And again, I'm learning this so that I can go read the paper on n-step deep Q learning. Uh, and I know really what it's about, what's going on. And I already now have an idea of how it's implemented based on reading this, knowing what I know about Q learning. But I'm a big believer in mastering fundamentals and then moving on to more complicated things. All that said, let's get back to the code. Okay, as I said, I forgot to store the state memory. So we'll say... Uh, <laughs> state memory t modulus n equals observation. And we're not converting to the uh, integer representation. We'll handle that when we need it. Uh, we'll store it as an actual array of uh, floating point numbers. So the first thing we want to do is take the action we just selected at the top of the episode. So observation reward done info equals env step action. And then say score plus equals reward because we want to increment our current score by the reward. And then store this state in the array. So it's going to be t plus 1 modulus n. We don't want to increment t just yet. It starts out at 0. We want to increment t at the very end of the loop uh, because we're using a while instead of a for loop. So, so here we have the uh, state memory t plus 1 modulus n equals observation. Then we see a reward memory, uh, t plus 1 modulus n equals reward. So we've handled saving our states and rewards in the array. Then we say if we're done, then set t equal to t plus 1. Because remember, t lags uh, the done flag by one step. So capital T is the terminal time. And set capital T to t plus 1. And say... Uh, action equals choose action Q observation uh, epsilon and then store that action in our memory at T plus 1 modules n equals action and then we want to uh, do the actual calculation for G so we'll say tau equals T minus n plus 1 if tau greater than equal to 0 then g equals gamma to the j minus tau minus 1. My son is quite angry. I don't know if you can hear that, but he's pissed about something. So gamma to that power multiplied by the reward memory of j modulus n for j in range tau plus 1 min of uh, tau plus n or t quantity plus 1. And end list comprehension, and say g equals mp dot sum g. So let me go back to the algorithm so you can see where that comes from because it might not be clear to you. So right here we have this sum 
uh, over the min uh, the step i equals tau plus one to the minimum of tau plus n or capital T of gamma to the i minus tau minus one, where I've just swapped from i to j because I'm already using i for my outer for loop just to be safe and uh, secure. So that way there's no confusion for the reader about what i actually means. Uh, so that's the step I'm executing there. And so next we have to handle this and then the update. So let's do that. So what I did there is created a list and then took the sum. Uh, and now we want to say if uh, tau plus n is less than capital T, then s equals get state, uh, state memory uh, tau plus n modulus n and one more parenthesis a equals get equals action memory sub tau plus n modulus n is that correct uh, let's turn it into an int just to be safe int because i'm not sure if it returns a numpy array or what i just want to be pedantic g plus equals gamma to the n power multiple like <laughs> multiplied by q of s and a all right, that's pretty straightforward. So that is the if statement in there. Now we have to handle incrementing uh, Q. And if you're not you know, sure, all this is doing is, this is summing up all of the rewards uh, up, to the, up to the last time step, and then saying if that is not a terminal step, then just go ahead and increase it by the discounted value of the uh, state action value function. Uh, so that takes care of that and then say s equals get state because we need to know the update for the current state whereas this is for uh, the tau plus n state so we want to say get state state memory uh, tau modulus n a equals action memory sub tau modulus n and then say Q of SNA plus equals alpha times the quantity G minus Q of SNA. I think I have all of my parentheses. And then uh, at the end, we want to increment T by one because we've increased our time step. And that's why I have to do the uh, T plus one up here because I'm not actually incrementing T until everything is all done. But then we run into a problem. Uh, so the problem we run into is, well, let me just show it to you. Let's do this. So I'll say, uh, I'll say print tau, tau, and then we want to print, let's say, q, q of um, get state, state memory tau modulus n yeah is that right get state and then a that's uh, action memory sub tau modulus n let me put that on the next line q let's actually do this let's say percent dot to f percent Q get state and then I need to close that and that that's Q and then uh, we don't want to print G let's do this and we'll say if done we'll say print episode ends at step T and print that and then let's just play for two episodes and you can see what happens here. Let's say n episodes equals two. Right, quit invalid syntax here. Ah, so a in range, I have an extra parenthesis. Try that, unexpected. Reward memory. Uh, I've done something egregiously wrong here. It says unexpected character after line continuation. 
maybe I had a space. It's unexpected end of file. Oh, there. All right, Python and step. Cart data space is not defined. Cart vel space. No, cart. What is it? Line 34. Cart data space is not defined. So line 34 right here. Cart theta space. I have cart. Ah. It's pole theta space. Sorry. Uh, line 34. Undo and. So that's also pole theta velocity space. That's how you know I'm doing this in real time. Uh, oh God, what? I did the same thing there. Line 13, it says cart theta space is not defined. That's because it's pole theta space. Pole, all right. You guys probably saw that right away, but it's kind of hard for me to see when I'm typing and writing. Okay, key error, none. So that's interesting, none and 0, 0.0. Get state, state memory. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right, this is dumb. Uh, we want to return. <laughs> uh, cart theta. No kidding. Wow. Okay, let's try that. Uh, so I'd put it in. I'd put in a. Print statement here. Let's get rid of that. And let's say, uh, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Let's try this again. Okay. So now this is what, what I wanted you to see. So tau starts out at minus 15, as we said, and it doesn't start updating it until it hits zero. So all the Q values are still zero prior to that. So it starts updating, but then it says episode ends at step 31, but tau only episode, uh, updates up until step 16. So this ter uh, basically terminates prematurely. So what do we do? Well, we basically have to do the same thing after the episode ends. So let's come down here and say, um, leave that. Let's grab this and say, uh, grab all of this, copy it, let's yank it, and paste it. And instead of if tau greater than zero, we want for tau in range t minus n plus 1 to capital T. And it's going to basically do the same, same stuff, but we want to print at each step. Print at each step, print it, yes, okay. And then go ahead and try it again. Float object, uh, you're killing me. Range. Oh, that is because I need to indent this, or unindent rather. So is that, yeah, okay, let's try it again. All right, so now you see that the episode ends at step 15, and then Tau goes all the way up to updating up until step 
15. So it updates all the way instead of going just shy right at N, right? Up here it only goes all the way up to N and doesn't go all the way from N to the terminal step. And here it goes all the way to the end. Let's do it once more. So 10, it doesn't go all the way to the end there. 31, there it goes. So it goes all the way from uh, N to T, capital T. Okay, so now that is working precisely as we need it to. Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of these print statements because we don't need them. And get rid of this one. I can't believe I forgot that return statement. That's the problem with talking and doing YouTube at the same time, talking and writing code. Okay, so let's let it play, I don't know, 50,000 games. We're not quite done. We have to handle a few other bookkeeping things. So we say uh, at the end of every episode, we want to say scores.append score. We want to say average score equals MP mean minus 100. Well, let's say 1,000 every thousand or so and epsilon equals epsilon minus two over an episodes if zero else zero and then we say if i modulus 1000 equals zero then print episode i average score and print the epsilon All right, let's try it again. Ah, invalid syntax, NP mean minus 1,000 on, oh, scores, of course, of course. So there it goes, now it's running. We'll give it a second to do its thing. All right, so that took several minutes to run, and you can see that it does indeed learn. So as epsilon decreases, the score achieves somewhat of a maximum value. Now, this isn't totally beating the environment. Uh, for the cart pull environment, solved is considered 200 or more as a score. Uh, so this is a little bit subpar, but let me refer back to the textbook to show you why that happens. So once again, if we scroll back up to the plot here, you can see that this RMS error also corresponds to how well the model does, or in this case, it's kind of the inverse of the score, right? Uh, in some sense, it'll be related. You know, it's not an exact inverse relationship, but the, the error and the score will vary in opposite directions inversely. And you can see that there is a trade-off between alpha and n. So you have to do a fair amount of hyperparameter tuning to get something that looks like uh, a really good score to actually solving the environment. But nonetheless, we did demonstrate clear evidence of learning, uh, and this is a totally functional implementation of n-step sarsum. Uh, and the only thing I would improve is the quality of the code. So if we come back here, uh, in particular, uh, what screams out for improvement here is the duplication of, you know, this block of code right here. Uh, screams out for refactoring because it's duplicated right here. So it should be put in its own little function. Uh, and indeed, we really could use an agent class and all that good stuff. Uh, when I write it up for my course, I will have much, much cleaner code because that's kind of my standard. This is just YouTube. I want to illustrate the concept and leave it to you, the viewer, for an exercise should you feel so motivated. So I hope that was helpful. If it was, make sure to share, leave a like and a comment. Hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon so you get notified when I release a new video. And don't forget, Deep Q Learning from Paper to Code is on sale right now at Udemy for $10.99. Uh, within the next week or so, my new code will be dropping. I'm in the process of recording it now. Uh, once I'm done recording it, then, of course, uh, Udemy has to approve it. Uh, and then it will go live. It's on actor critic methods. Uh, it's going to be something I'm going to update over the coming month. I'm going to add additional modules. Right now, it's a fully-fledged course, but I want to add more and more material to it. I want it to be the most comprehensive actor critic course on Udemy. And I'm going to add more material to the deep key learning course as well, because I want that to be the most comprehensive deep key learning course on Udemy as well. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.